Hey, Grant Cardone here, and I want to thank you so much for believing in yourself enough to invest in yourself. Congratulations. And I also want to take the time to share with you a bit about my story so you can understand how I did what I've done and more importantly, how you can do it and how you can create what I call a super life. Let me assure you, I didn't have someone to help me along. I didn't have a father that could lead me to the land of the rich. And I'm guessing neither do you, right? Look, in fact, I had no dad. My dad died when I was 10 years old. I didn't have a dad that could lend me a million dollars for my first real estate deal. Do you? My dad couldn't assist me with political connections or make introductions at the country club or show me the way to do business. He wasn't there. Does your dad do that? Because mine couldn't. He died when he was 52 after he had bought his dream house. My dad couldn't assist with political connections or make introductions at the country club or even show me the ways of business. See, my dad died when I was 10. He wasn't around to show me the way. He wasn't there to show me how to create success or how to manage money or how to make money or how to invest money. The truth is, When my dad died, he left my mother with a little bit of death insurance money. They called it life insurance. It was death insurance money. And my mom had never held a job and didn't know how to create new money. She immediately sold the house, the dream house my dad had finally bought at the end of his career, at the end of his life. She sold my dad's dream house one week after my father was buried. She cut back. She contracted. She started saving everything. I was 10 years old. I watched my mom not even able to grieve like a widow should be able to grieve. Instead, she was moved into overwhelming fear of managing a little bit of money and taking care of five children. See, my family, my parents were both uh, uh, children of Italian immigrants. In fact, my grandfather was born on the boat on the way over from Sicily. My dad's parents came over from Naples, and they were shipbuilders, hardworking people who had dreams of being part of the middle class. My dad was, in fact, the first in his family to ever even attend college. He wanted me to go to college also. In fact, told my mom on his deathbed, make sure those boys get a good education. From a very early age, I got that my dad's number one mission in life before he passed was merely to be a good husband, a good father, and provide for his family. His goal was not to get rich. His goal was to take care of his family, putting a roof over our heads and making sure we had food, clothes, and a good education. A few years before I was born, my dad took on an ambitious plan to start his own life insurance company with a couple of partners that he took on. I don't know the details of all about what happened with this insurance company, but his partners somehow ousted him. And at the age of 42, he was in a very tough situation. What most of us call career transition. Maybe you've been in a tough situation at times. It sucks. It's called that part of life that sucks. A nice way of saying that is career transition. My dad found out he was out of work, out of his job, out of his dream company, 42 years old, and then found out from his wife, we're pregnant with the fourth and fifth child. That was me and my twin brother. 
so here at 42 years of age, no income, three kids, two more on the way. My dad had to start over. I hate starting over. I don't know about you, but I hate starting over. It's tough. It's scary. Sometimes you have no choice. and My dad had no choice. So at the age of 42, my dad used his last little bit of money in savings and became a licensed stockbroker, embarking on yet a new career. Now, thanks to his work ethic, his new venture started to pay off. My dad decided to use the last little bit of money he had in savings to become a licensed stockbroker, embarking on yet a new career. Thanks to timing, we were about to enter what's called a bull market in the stock market. Thanks to his timing, good work ethic, his new venture started to pay off. And just after my eighth birthday, we moved to our new home, a dream home. Literally in eight years, my dad had turned his life around and his finances. There was five children now. We moved to his dream home on the lake in Lake Charles, Louisiana, a sprawling one-and-a-half-acre lakefront property. We had a car. We had a house. We had a small skiff boat, flat-bottom boat. We had a riding lawnmower. See, my family had made it. We had more than most people. This was called upper middle class. I had doctors. Doctors lived on both sides of us, okay? And back in those days, doctors were the rich people in town. My dad's hard work and success at the stock brokerage firm had gotten our family firmly into the middle class. I often overheard my mom and dad talking about how they had made it. How many people do you know in the middle class today who think they've made it? It was only a year and a half after my dad had bought his dream home that he died of a heart condition at the young age of 52. Now we were confronted with whether we had actually made it or not. Immediately, my mother put the house up for sale. Why are we putting the house up for sale? Why are we selling the dream house? This was my dream home. I didn't understand. I'd lost my dad. I'm in major grief. I'm angry. I go to sleep each night waiting, thinking my dad's going to wake up tomorrow morning. Uh, He's going to wake up. This is just a bad dream. My mom can't even experience the grief that a widow should be able to experience. Instead, she's thrown into overwhelm of fear. She didn't know how to produce money, didn't know how to manage money, didn't know how to save money, didn't know how to invest money, and now she has to be the mom and the dad, the single parent of five children, three of which are still in high school. My mom was scared, and I could feel it. I watched her clipping coupons when she should have been crying. I watched her constantly worried about money. I'm talking about the basic necessities, heating, air conditioning, groceries, gasoline. Does this sound familiar to you? Does this sound like we made it? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, at the age of 10 years old, for the next five to six years, I am reminded on a daily basis, I can't help my mother. I'm powerless. At 10 years old, 11, at 12, I am powerless to help my mother. I remember my grandfather telling me, your job is to take care of your mom. You got to be a big boy now. I think my grandfather probably told my twin brother that same thing and my older brother, who was five years older than me. All of us felt powerless. I felt powerless. My brother Gary felt powerless. My older brother felt powerless. Why? We couldn't help my mom. Every meal. Every meal that I ate, upper middle class, that we were, better off than most, my mom reminded me. Every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, my mom would tell me, eat it all. Eat all the food on that plate. There's someone starving somewhere in the world. Every time I left the bedroom, I could hear my mother say from across the house, Turn those lights off. We don't own the electric company. Even 
In the bathroom, my mother suggested that we save water by flushing less often. Flushing the toilet, that is. See, this is the middle class that I was being taught I should be grateful for. And the truth is, I wasn't grateful. I was angry. I was in grief. I, was, I felt powerless. I felt incapable of helping my mother. I could tell she was scared. She didn't know how to produce money. She couldn't get a job. She had her hands full just raising five kids. She's trying to manage a little bit of money. She's clipping coupons. She has no real education on how to create, save, or invest money. So what she did was what most people in the middle class do. They're grateful that they have more than others and scared they have not enough. At the age of 16, I vowed to my mother, one day as a rebellious teenager, one day when I grow up, I'm going to get rich. I'm going to get so rich, I will never have to worry about money again. And when I do, by the way, I'm going to help a lot of people. I made this commitment at the age of 16, probably partially out of a rebellious, angry teenager. But this commitment really stuck in me. I bet somewhere in your life you've had a desire to help your mom or your dad or an uncle or an aunt or a brother or sister or maybe somebody that that needed help. My mom needed help. And my mom was too proud to ask for help. No one helped us. None of her brothers or sisters, no one came over and said, hey, let's help you guys out of this situation. I couldn't help. And I made a commitment at 16 that one day, one day I would get rich. And when I got rich, I would help my mom. I would take care of my family. I would take care of myself. And I was going to help other people. I would tell myself over and over, and I said this for years, probably from the age of 16 to 25, one day I'm going to make it big. But with too much time on my hands and no strong leadership, no mentorship, no father in my life, I got busy becoming a problematic teenager instead of a success. By the time I entered high school, my second year, I had become a problem, a serious problem for myself and others. I fell in with the wrong crowd. I was drinking, smoking, experimenting with drugs. I was smoking weed at the age of 16. And by the time I was 19, I was using any drug available. Short of shooting drugs, I tried it all, and I developed a massive daily drug problem. Somehow, I went on to college and wasted five years there, never paying attention in class, taking on debt just to satisfy my mom, and I ended up somehow graduating with an accounting degree that, by the way, I had no intention of using. At the end of the five years, I had $40,000 in debt from college loans Dude, I hate debt. That, the kind of debt that, that pays nothing back. By the age of 23, I had become the black sheep of my family. Despite my earlier pronouncements of wanting to be rich, I found myself with no abilities, no self-esteem, and no direction. Look, if you've ever been in that place, if you've ever felt like this, I'm here to give you hope today. If a, if a guy like me can go as low as I went and then one day get to where I'm at today, I know you can too. And that's why I'm sharing this story with you. But l- let me tell you a little more first, okay, how I turned this around. See, the people who loved me and believed in me the most, my mom, my sister, my twin brother, they had no idea how to help me. Hell, I didn't know how to help me. I was broke and broken. I was broken financially, emotionally, spiritually, even physically. At the age of 25, I checked myself into a rehab center to get off the drugs. I was there 28 days. And when I stepped out of the treatment center, finally, for the first time in nine years, 
I had gone 28 days without using a drug. I made a commitment to myself when I left there. I made a commitment the day I left that treatment center. And that's what I need you to do today. I need you to make a commitment today, a commitment that sticks. What that commitment will be, I will share with you shortly. But first, back to my story. When I got home from the treatment center, I started writing down what I wanted to do with my life because I wanted to prove to the world, to my mom, my dad that had died, my brothers, my sisters, my uncles, my teachers, the counselors that had counted me out. I wanted to prove to them that I was worth something, that I could be successful. But I knew at this time I couldn't start helping other people. I also wanted to prove to the world that I could help others like that commitment I had made when I was 16. One day, Mom, I'm going to make it. And when I do, I'm going to help others. But I knew right now I couldn't help others until I got my own life in order. I had to get my physical condition in order, my emotional, mental, spiritual, and my financial house in order. I made a commitment to throw myself into my job 100%. At that time, I was in a sales job that I hated. Absolutely despise that job. It's going to be a lot of changes here, clearly. For two years, I had been in this job and done very poorly. I hated meeting customers that I didn't know. I didn't like selling the product I was selling. I felt like it was below me and degrading. And what was missing was one thing, a commitment to be great at one thing. I decided to throw myself into this sales job 100% to get great at something I hated. That's right. I decided to get great at a job I didn't even like. Within six months after this commitment and dedication, I was selling more in one month than I used to sell in a year. I was outperforming people that had been there for 10 years longer than I had been. I was making money for the first time. And because I no longer was spending time on drugs and alcohol and crashing cars, I was saving all the money. Okay, I spent spent hundreds of hours every day watching video to improve myself. And it started to pay off. I had thrown myself completely into my new career. Now, you may be thinking, well, Grant, I don't have a drug problem. You may be thinking, I don't, you don't have a drug, you don't have an alcohol problem. Maybe you didn't have to go this low. Maybe you've never hit rock bottom. I don't know. Maybe you've gone lower than this. Maybe you don't have any of these problems that I had. The reason I'm telling you this is that little millionaire booklet, 44 pages that I'm sending you that you're going to get is a codification of exactly how a person can go from zero to to millionaire status, decamillionaire, or hectamillionaire. One day, maybe I'll be able to write a book about becoming a billionaire. I'm telling you my story right now to tell you, no matter how bad you have it right now, this second, this moment, or how good you have it, your life can get better. It requires studying. I know that studying the right people can change your life. By the time I was 28, I was no longer a kid with a drug problem. I was a solid sales professional in the top 1% of a very large industry. Just three years before, I had been in very low places, and I had committed to never going back to those low places. You know, low places are good for one thing. They force you to make a commitment to get out, to get on higher ground. Are you ready to make yourself a commitment to get on higher ground? Regardless of where you are today, can your life be improved? If so, are you ready to make a commitment to get your life better? Let me tell you a little more about my story before I reveal to you the commitment you'll need to make today in order for you to have everything you want to have. At the age of 29, I lost that job, that sales job. I felt like my dad. 
in transition in my career. Everything was going good, and boom. I was just starting to do well in my life, just starting to save some money, just starting to put things aside, and I lost my job. And it was completely unfair. Where I was working, my boss was stealing from the guy that owned the place. And I went to tell my friend that owned the place that my boss was stealing from his company And guess who lost his job? I did. So here I am at 29 years old, four years without drugs, just starting to get my life together, just starting to be confident, and I get waylaid. I don't even know how to spell waylaid. I had two choices, go work for myself or go work for another company doing what I had been doing. My priest friend, Charlie, put it on a whiteboard. I asked him, what should I do, Father Charles? And he said, which one are you most fearful of? That was clear. Working for myself was definitely going to be scarier. And so I did. I started my own company. In the next three years, I would make less money in three years than I made in the previous one year. But I knew this is something I had to figure out. For me to create freedom, financial freedom for myself, I knew I had to learn how to run my own business. Not to mention I didn't get along with authority figures. Not to mention that I had been fired from six other jobs and three times from one job. I went it on my own. It took three years I was making $30,000 a year before expenses. I was a miserable failure at the age of 29, 30, 31. I went from being the top of my industry to the bottom of my industry. No one knew me. No one cared about me. No one really liked my idea. I didn't know how to sell it. I didn't know how to pitch it. I didn't know how to promote myself. I didn't know how to market I was a one-man losing show for three years. I just kept having this voice in my head say, one day you're going to make it. One day you're going to make it. I remember telling my mom, this is 16, the angry teenager. One day I'm going to get so rich. And when I do, I'm going to help a lot of other people. 29, 30, and 31, those three years of my career, I was not getting rich. I was going backwards. I was driving a used car, saving money when I could. I had to save. I I didn't have any money to save. I'm going through a little bit of savings that I have. I'm having to watch all my expenses. I'm buying everything. Anything that I'm buying, I'm buying on sale. I'm going through the little bit of money I have in a savings account. My business is a miserable failure up to this point. But I got a problem. And the problem is I have trouble working for other people. I lost my last job unfairly, so I'm resentful. I have no connections. I'm running out of money. I can't take another job. You ever been in this situation? Are you ready to make your commitment? Because I had to make mine. I had to make a commitment to making my business work. And I did. I would pray. I would beg. I would search. I would read. I would study. I would borrow money to learn new skills and new strategies. And one day, one day, it all broke. One day, my business got better. Three years later, my business was doing great, and I was starting my second company. Five years later, I started my real estate business. 35 years old, I'm buying my first apartment deal. I was no longer saving just to save. I was no longer clipping coupons. I was no longer just getting by. Finally, 
I was saving to invest. You know, investing, they say, is the holy grail to becoming wealthy. It's not the job. It's not the income. It's not saving. It's not managing money. The holy grail to to wealth is investing. And by the way, any commitment, any real commitment on your part would require an investment to follow. See, I see people every day say, I'm committed, I'm committed. If you have not made a commitment of resources, time, and money, you are not committed. When I look back between the ages of, well, 25, I committed to my recovery from drug addiction. I I committed time and money to get off of drugs. At 29, 30, and 31, when I turned my businesses around, my business around, I committed time and money. As a young salesperson at 25, I committed time and money to turn my sales career around. If you want financial freedom, you must commit time and money. What what I've done in my life since the age of 29 to today, $500 million worth of real estate, $750 million, three quarters of a billion dollars in real estate transactions, $500 million in holdings, four companies that now do $100 million a year in sales. To go from where I was to where I am, a private jet I paid $8 million for, and it cost $2 million a year to operate. To go from where I was to where I am, one, I'm grateful, I'm blessed, And most importantly, I am so happy that I'm able to share how I've done this. Because along the way, what I did was I took the time to write out what worked and what didn't work. I've codified exactly what I did. One of the things that I codified is about commitments. Any commitment, any and all commitments. Commitments are not ideas. Commitments must be followed with time and money. See, there's actually three things people have to know about money in order to have it. Number one, how do you get money? I codified this. I learned the mistake I was making at 29, 30, and 31 when I started my company. The mistake was I didn't know how to get money. So I learned, how do I get new money? Not the money I'm getting from my job. Not just the money that's there. How do I get money? Number two, how do I keep money? Most people never learn, number one, how to get it. Number two, most people never learn how to keep it. And number three, the biggest thing most people never learn is how to multiply it. See, the problem is most people want to learn how to multiply money before they even know how to get money. Where do I invest my money, Grant? I'm asked asked this question all the time. Where do I invest my money, Grant? Dude, don't worry. It's premature. How do I get it? How do I keep it? How do I multiply it? See, I learned how to do all three. And in fact, have codified exactly how to do all three. And it's because I've learned how to do one, two, and three that I've learned how to multiply money so that I can own a jet so that I have companies making $100 million a year. And because of all that, I've experienced a lot of attention. Fox, NBC, MSNBC, Bloomberg have all covered me. I write on Entrepreneur, CNBC, Huffington Post. I do massive seminars with some of the biggest players in the world that speak at my events for free, by the way. Look, I'm not bragging. I'm telling you, this is what has happened to me. With no connections, with no investors, without education being the reason, I have been able to create indestructible wealth and even a fame, even almost a celebrity status as a business person. And I have been able to fulfill the promise I made to my mother at 16. One day, I'm going to be so successful, I can help other people. This is allowing me now to create my legacy. I want to thank you for getting the Millionaire Booklet because you are allowing me to make my dreams come true and the promise I made to my mother. 
See, I bet you have the same ambitions. Most of the people that I meet that want to make a lot of money don't want to make a lot of money just for themselves. They want to make a lot of money so they can help others. Don't you? Look, why deny it? Why deny that you want to be successful or you want to be famous or you want to be super rich or that you want to help other people? Why deny it? You know how low I went. So no matter where you are today, you know if I can do it, you can do it. And maybe you didn't go as low as I did. I just got off the phone with a young man, 24 years old. His name is Hayden. He lives in Utah. He's already married. Last year, he made $250,000. This year, he thinks he'll make a million dollars. He said to me, Grant, you are the uncle I never had. You are an inspiration to me. Oh, by the way, did I tell you he made $250,000 last year in four months? Don't let anyone tell you, by the way, that getting rich isn't important. If you've had that idea, I don't need to get rich. I just want enough to get by. Remember the story I shared with you about my dad and my mom. They were out on the pier at my dad's dream house. He was 51 years old. And he said to my mom, we made it. And then he died. And then my mom found out we didn't make it. You think you're doing good because you have more than your neighbor or you have more than somebody in a third world country. Most of America believes they're doing well because they're in the middle class only to find out later they have no money for savings, no money in retirement, no money for medical emergencies, no money to help out others in their family, much less their community or a church. Last year, I gave millions of dollars to charity and raised over $107 million for other charities. And I would not be able to do that had I been satisfied with just the middle class. Hopefully, my story inspires you. More importantly, hopefully, you're ready to make that commitment that I've been telling you about. I have codified how to create millions of dollars for others. It's called the Playbook to Millions. I have codified a playbook, step-by-step playbook to millions. Millionaire, I believe, is the new middle class. I made this playbook for you to change your approach to financial success and business. The Playbook to Millions is designed to create not just money for you and your family, but also time freedom. I lay out specific step-by-step strategies that you need to get you from where you are to affluence and prosperity even indestructible wealth if you choose. I've codified everything for you and made it extremely simple. Look, you need to know how to create a financial plan. You need to know about the 40% rule. You need to understand why budgets don't work and in fact are incorrect for creating wealth. You need to know about the mistakes you are making right now that will guarantee you need to you need to know and identify the mistakes most families are making with their finances you must understand what i call the 955 rule and the wealth creation formula this playbook was written for you so you don't make the mistakes i did so you don't make the mistakes my mom made so you don't make the mistakes my dad made by the way And he was successful. It's time you get out of the middle class. It's time you get out of just getting by. It's time for your financial freedom. If you're ready to take your brand, your name, your business, your current situation to the next level, then do this. Make the commitment today. Invest in your playbook to millions. 
There's no place for you to go but up. Most of what I teach in the playbook to millions is not taught in college. I know. I went there. I went to college and even high school believing they were going to teach me to be successful. Remember when I was 10, my dad died. I waited for him to show up every year for the next six years, thinking it was a dream that he died, waiting for someone to teach me how to be successful. Powerless. I couldn't help my mother. Promising myself, one day, Grant, you will grow up and be so successful, you will help others. That help, that desire to help others was driven by this anger that no one was there to help me. I then went on, finished high school and college, seeking mentors, seeking out teachers, seeking out someone, some dad, some uncle, somebody that was going to somehow show me how to one day be successful. If you're anything like me, you've been looking for the same thing. You've been looking and waiting and wanting, searching the internet for someone or something to show you the way. Here's the bad news and the good news. The bad news is schools and colleges will not teach you financial success. They will not teach you how to find money. They will not teach you how to keep money. And they definitely will not teach you how to multiply it. The good news is I have codified exactly what you can do if you're educated or uneducated. If you started out in the middle class and went up and you're making a lot of money right now, I can take you to the next level. If you did what I did, started in the middle and went all the way down to the bottom or If you started in poverty, I have helped people at every level. Playbook to Millions has taken people that are making $30,000 a year to making three hundred. dollars People that are making a million dollars a year have taken them to tens of millions. I know people that were making a million dollars a year that called me and said, I need help. I never have any money. Look, you need to know how to create a financial plan. You need to know about the 40% rule. What is the 40% rule? You need to know why budgets don't work. Again, all this is included in the playbook to millions. You must know the mistakes you're making right now in financial planning, in budgets, in expenditures, when to invest, when not to invest. What is a good investment? What is the 95-5 rule? What is the wealth creation formula? The playbook to millions was written by me, laid out in video and in book format, 420 page digital download so that you don't have to make the mistakes others have made. See, it's not just about how much money you can make. Look at the NBA ball players in the NFL. 78% are broke two years after making $5 million a year. It's not just how much you make. And oh, by the way, it's not how much you save. As they said in the millionaire, as they said in the millionaire next door. If you just don't drink your lattes, I remember reading that book. What do you mean? If you don't drink lattes, at the end of your life, you will have an extra $80,000. Sounds like my dad. Save the pennies. A penny saved is a penny earned. I don't want to be an old man this rich. I want to have money so I can buy time and freedom. I want to have money so I can give back. I want to have money so I can take care of my family. I do not want to have money when I'm old and sick and dying. I don't want to sell my dream home. Are you ready to learn why you don't have money? What you don't know about money? What you don't know about finances and affluence and prosperity? Are you ready to get out of just getting by? Are you ready to move into the affluence and prosperity that you read about in magazines? I hope so. 
Because if you're ready, I'm ready to get you playbook to millions. If you're ready to commit, which by the way means a commitment of time and money, then invest in the playbook to millions today. But by doing so, you make my commitment that I made to my mother when I was 16 a possibility. When I told her, one day I'm going to be successful. And when I do, I'm going to help others. I want to help you with your money. I want to help you with your finances. I want to help teach you how to get it, how to keep it. And most importantly, I want to teach you how to multiply it. Look, I want to help you with your finances. I want to help you. I want to show you how to get money. Number two, how to get more money. Number three, how to keep the money that you've gotten. And number four, how to multiply that money. You're just one click away to Playbook to Millions. Click the button below now, and I look forward to helping you get your financial freedom and your prosperity. And thank you for allowing me And thank you for allowing me to fulfill my promise to my mother when I told her, one day I'm going to be successful, and when I am, I'm going to help others. I look forward to helping you.